Welcome, friends. Our last semifinal matchup in the 2022 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Summer Tournament has gone from a best of three down to a best of one. Angel FM taking game two, Big Slamu taking game one. That means whoever wins tonight will advance to the finals to take on the reigning champion, Tilo Tilo. So you can be the winner of the 2022 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Summer Tournament. So it all comes down to this. One player moving on, the other going down to the third place match. MathGirl718 is your restreamer tonight. Cameon Renekai, your tracker. And uh, a real pros pro joining me, Archfield Monk, in the booth tonight. That's pros, P-R-O-S-E. Pros pro. The secret agent man. Are you sure it's not Neymar Kekis? Uh This is honestly a really exciting matchup. Game one was about as down to the wire as it gets, and game two wasn't much less uh, competitive. It just came down to a bit of exploration at the end. So this could be a real, a real exciting race. Yeah, I think we saw really in the first two matches uh, just some exemplary play from both racers. If you wanted a crash course in how to play Dragon Warrior Randomizer, you watch these two guys in games one and two. Uh, they were both really on point, uh, but as you say, came down to some exploration there at the end of game two. We've got a gold chest and a fairy water in the throne room as we're underway. We do have nine attack power, so the fairy water obviously good for use as a battle item, uh, but maybe don't need it. Uh, it's still very welcome to see in the throne room, I think. I like to see a fairy water in the throne room. Also, I have the Hurt spell, so the runners have a lot of tools early on right now, and a town. And a town. So we have the gold in the town. We've got a close north zone as Angel encounters a wolf up there, and the town is Rim, so we're going to have keys at the start, too. This could get out of hand hurry, depending on what's in the treasury and in Rim. Yeah, you can uh, you can easily see uh, we've got five access to at least five chests here. We've also got access to the tangible basement now with keys. I think I just spotted another town off to the west as well. Slamu poked his head out to come back in to get this double lock chest, and I, I could swear I saw another town off to the west there. I saw it too. It was just in the desert, and you don't even have to walk through the desert completely to get there. No, Angel went north south, so he didn't peek it if in fact Slamu saw it, and of course I was looking away, so I did not see what the remolder chest was, but it looks like more gold because Slamu's up to about 1100. Does not have enough for anything consequential in this shop. Angel's gonna get a look at this chest as well. And Slamu did evidently spot the town because he makes a beeline for it, and it turns out it's Hawksness. Well, considering they've opened two chests already and seen two gold chests but can't really buy anything, this couldn't be more disappointing so far. <laughs> For sure not, but Angel, with that hurt spell, is able to take down a scorpion right away. Actually had also gotten a slime, it looks like, so he's going to jump right up to level 3. This is 3 power, 6 speed, 23 hit points, 12 magic points, heal, and heal more. All the healing you could possibly want. Not a ton of MP to cast it just yet. And there is a gold chest in the treasury along with a curse belt, an herb, and I believe a torch. That's a starter adventurer's kit in the treasury, it looks like. Probably don't want the belt, but that's some hard currency, I suppose, if you should need it later. Of course, the curse belts also denote that at least one of our search spots is occupied, either in the overworld on Hawksness, which we've already seen. Haven't seen the spot yet, but we at least know where it is and uh, coal, wherever that might be found. Slamu's swinging away. Uh, he maybe, yeah, okay. He just remembered he had the hurt there. So he'll take down a scorpion as well, jump up to level two as Angel clears out the treasury. So we're basically on level footing here. Uh, Slamu has got his broadsword now, having gotten that gold chest in the treasury. It looks like Angel's headed for the back door of Tanangel before he does anything else.
my moves gonna get another scorpion he'll get to level three and we'll be just three experience points away from level four probably grave with angel side yeah, he went to the right and then up, so I guess it could be Swamp South too, but this golem's gonna stop him from getting any further regardless of where he is. Slamu with that broadsword, able to heal there and duck the weak breath to take that scorpion. That's an 8863 level. Pretty decent. four as well. He's headed to the north here. Figures he has plenty of tools at his disposal. We know this north zone is pretty close, uh, so there's probably some good enemies up here too as he winds his way around toward this bridge. This Drakey Maw, worth 20 experience points. So a little back and forth here. Slamu rapidly approaching level five, just here in zone zero. A lot of good enemies around to kill. Angel's probably got the better zone though, but the wolf could be a bit annoying to take down. Yeah, wolf could be a bit annoying here. It can still hit pretty hard on 14 defense, but all you really usually need is three hertz as long as the rolls are decent and they haven't been so far. I think that's 19. Uh, so Angel will pause to heal, burn a little bit more resources than he likely wanted to, but this wolf will get him level five and he does take it down. Two zero seven. I think that magic point should have been negative two. The game messed up a little bit. <laughs> oh, but we've got a golem in the northwest diagonal, uh, so that's not terrible. You can run from golems pretty readily. They're not going to catch you very often, but back attack there means he's going to get pulverized in most cases. Meanwhile, Slamu's grind is going sideways. He's barely getting any encounters in this forest, and almost all of them have been slimes lately. Yeah, I was going to say, the last time I looked, he had 70 experience, and now he's up to 76, so it means he's just taken down three, three red slimes since the last time I peeked on his side of the screen. And it's just slimes and red slimes all day long. Whereas Angel knows these hills tiles up here, which are the, tied for the highest encounter rate in the game, do have some enemies he can take, those wolves that we saw, the Drakimaz. Uh, some pretty good stuff. The wolf especially doesn't look like it has anything on now on 50 hit points. You should be able to race these very reliably. It was already pretty good on level 4, but definitely on 5. Opted to swing there, perhaps overestimated the attack power just a bit. Did 2 damage. But that's okay. Level 6 incoming for Angel and level 5 incoming for Slamu. Level 6 is 8, 9, 14, 1, and outside. Well, the stats look pretty good so far. Yeah, that agility, like, um, if that was Grave below 10 Angel, I'm surprised Angel isn't going back there. I assume I'll just wait until he dies, but it'd be really tempting if that were Grave to just go back and check right now. Yeah, for sure, and uh, you can easily see, I think Slamu's thinking the same thing. If you take a death, uh, then you'll just end up in the throne room, and that's shorter passage back to the back of the castle. So that makes a, a good bit of sense, I think, if that is the plan. Slamu's going to head west. And we don't have a good sense of what's over here in the east-west zone yet, but a warlock to start is not a bad thing to see, unless it's got an ability, which it does. Weak breath could be much worse. Two hurts and done for Slamu, picks up 28 experience. Not optimal, but you'll take an enemy with weak breath if it's if it's good value like a warlock is, and a Drakima is a good second enemy. Yeah, and he's just going to swing away here. He does have that broadsword, uh, so two swings should do this. Drakima's dodge a little bit. Angel finally gets across this bridge, heads toward a cave that is at the tail end of this peninsula. Uh, and it looks like that's Swamp North. Quick bonk north, and he heads directly to the south. 
has no resources though, so any run blocks could be <laughs> lethal in this wyvern exactos him and sends him back. Slamu picks up level six. That said, that means that almost certainly it's grave under Tanadol, so I imagine I'll check that now. Yeah. Or not. Or not. Maybe thinking about Swamp Cave. Based on what we've seen from Slamu, is this a dead end west of Hoxness here? Certainly seems to be, although I haven't seen the exact uh, edge there. So who knows? Maybe it just goes out for one tile more. But Yeah, it looks like First Continent might just be shaped like a backward C. It's a bizarro Star Tropics universe, I guess. And uh, we've got really only a handful of locations here, perhaps. We want, we want to see what's to the west of Slamu here, <laughs> see if there's anything else. This west zone has, what, Scorpions, Drakima, and Warlock so far? Warlock's yeah. weak breath, not great. Angel zone is contaminated by easily the worst enemy anyone's ever seen. A weak breath poltergeist. I mean, did it have to have weak breath for you to call it the worst enemy that anyone's ever seen? Um, it could have had, like, um, hit you in the face with a pie and run away, and that would still be the worst enemy anyone's ever seen. And just briefly saw the edge of uh, the west there. It is indeed an empty first continent aside from the caves. Well, yeah, we've, the cave. Uh, the cave and, and Hawksness, which hardly counts as a location. It's... You know, nobody lives there, and it's, uh, you know. Although, in fairness, all the rest of the towns in Alephgard have, like, maybe, me what, maximum ten people living in them, so... I don't know. Hawksness isn't that much emptier than any other place. I will say the fourth enemy in this zone for Slamu is apparently a Magidrake, which isn't a bad consolation prize. So far, this zone is really helping him catch back up. Yes. Uh, that said, there are scorpions in this north zone too. Angel's going to get level 7, taking that one down. 9 0 two, 20, so a big boost to magic points, then sleep and repel show up. Not that that will be of any consequence to Angel. Uh, I will happily take anyone who wants to set an over under. On the first time, we will see Angel cast repel in the seed. As Beta says, oh look, sleep in a spell he never uses. <laughs> That's probably more of a meme than it deserves at this point, but it is pretty funny. Angel's trying to take on this Druin Lord here, finds out that it has Heal more, and with no stop spell to prevent that, thinks better of it, and bails. So this, the Northwest Diagonal here looks like Druin Lord Knight Gollum. It's not exactly pleasant to have to walk through, and this zone might extend all the way to the west here where we saw that Demon Knight as well. Slamu's gonna at least make a check of the spike tile it looks like. The Hawksness Zone itself has a knight and a magician, so nothing much to write home about. Stone Man here for Angel's screen. He has one cast of sleep left and uses it. Slamu, interestingly enough, so on this level, I mean, you can put the green dragon to sleep. He's got 61 attack power. That's less than you want, uh, but this is possibly killable Yeah, if you, were, if you were super interested in doing it. I'm honestly a little bit surprised he didn't try the sleep there, just because that was the only way he was going to win, aside from a crit. And it certainly got better odds than a crit. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, look at this. So, Swamp Cave, Swamp North, back ends into Garenham. Uh, so we have immediate gold grind availability if we find anything decent at these shops, but the chests, of course, take precedence. That chest certainly does. Looks like Angel will have armor. Looks like Angel will have armor, so one fewer thing that you have to worry about possibly grinding for. And it looks like Garenham is on the very west coast of the map, if that edge is to be believed. What was the Garenham shop there? Did you catch that? Uh, I didn't. I was looking to see if Slamo was going into Grave, and he is. So I didn't quite see what the shop had, but Angel didn't seem to buy anything from it, so... Several cave locations right outside of Garenham. That was Jerk Cave just to the northeast, and then it looks like Tablet immediately to the north of Garenham. And Angel, one of the... Uh, he dark walks Tablet like just about nobody. Uh, go through here with no problem. Tokens, stones, and a gold... Oh, man, I was hoping for harp there. <laughs> for Would have been pretty perfect. The trifecta. Death Necklace buried in Tablet Cave. So a lot of key items already on the board here now, 13 and a half minutes into the seed. 
And Slamu's gonna go for the full dive, thinking, well, there's two quest items here, maybe there's another one. But we know at least there's only a handful of things he could find that are consequential here. Still looking for the fighter's ring, of course, which can be very helpful depending on the endgame situation and isn't bad in the meantime. Also looking for the silver harp and the fairy flute, I guess. One of those items will be under the uh, search spot somewhere. Yes, at least we one already have, spot. Yeah, we've got that one cursed belt already. Uh, so let's see what Angel does here. That said, uh, one note from chat that apparently the gear and ham shop has all the good gear, silver shield and flame sword and magic armor, not that Angel wants it. So <laughs> yes. he so, could have pretty good gear in just a moment here. He has at minimum come back into the end to top off and he will burn a key here to head back into the back. So the way this works is if Angel wants to gold grind right now, he would grab these three chests again. Uh, he would die in Swamp Cave, and then that would put him back in the throne room, which would add three more chests to the buffer, which means he would only need to open two chests in the Chanagel Treasury in order to trigger what is known as the Gold Grind Glitch. The game can only handle having eight chests in memory, and so any chest he takes after that will be replicated infinitely, as we see another gold chest for Slamu at chest four of Grave. Blue Dragon in his way, though. Angel doesn't have much to death warp with here, so he's just gonna fling hurt at the werewolf, it looks like. Decent plan. Maybe even kills it. I wouldn't rule it out. The rolls haven't been great. Oh, he's yeah, actually he's just going for it. Yeah, he's gonna heal more and <laughs> go ahead and take it. He's very close already, so just gonna grab the experience and run. This is 95 for the werewolf. Probably needs maybe one more hurt, possibly two. And he gets him. So we're just about on even terms as far as experience goes. This blue dragon shows hurt more, which is good to know, but Slamu would probably prefer not to see any more of these the rest of the way. He is going to go after this Wraith sight unseen, and he does have enough attack power certainly to take it out, provided it has no dangerous abilities. Both runners are finding some pretty good enemies to fight right now. Yeah, there's been plenty of good stuff out there. Got that Wyvern on Angel's side. He's just checking the zone right now. There's Gold Man too, which you don't like to see. And of course, this is useful information for later as well, because this Swamp Cave zone shares its enemy group with the top floor of Mountain Cave. Uh, so having a thorough knowledge of this zone is very helpful for later as well. Slamu now at fifth chest of grave gets a dragon scale. I guess at least that will expedite the death warp if he chooses it. He does have enough MP for outside, I think. Yeah, he's he just, definitely he just, going for it. Yeah, he's taken laps in the, in the staircase just before the final chamber of grave, trying to get an encounter. He had those blue dragons earlier, and here courtesy of the golem. I didn't see whether that was the spike tile or not, because Angel was kind of walking around in Swamp Cave. Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, so it's possible that's the, the spike tile. If not, it's the last enemy in the zone. Either way, Angel has taken his death and uh, provided everything goes to plan. We'll shortly have a gold grind in effect. Meanwhile, Slamu has got his death warp potentially, but this is not exactly as expeditious as he would have liked because the Star Wyvern has sleep and hurt. On the one hand, that's not a dangerous combination if they're in Sherlock. On the other hand, it's a really annoying combination. <laughs> it's, it's just the, that's the stall wyvern. It's just gonna leech time away from you every time it puts you to sleep. Now, Slamu has a gold grind available here, of course, as well, because he's taken all five chests out of Grave. Uh, in his case, I don't know that he's seen anything of real consequence yet. Uh, but he is going to grind, I believe these are the herbs in the lower left chest. Yeah, I think so. I think the, the torches are in the lower right, so these would almost certainly be the herbs. Yep, so he'll grab a couple of torches for carrying around, and then go ahead and gold grind as well. One experience apart right now. <laughs> <laughs> Three, 535 to 536. Oh, Slamu's not going for that much at all. It's a bit surprising, considering you're pretty survivable right now. 
Yeah, you've got heal more. Uh, you have a couple of things at your disposal. Of course, it'll be disappointing when he does get to Garen Hammett's. He's going to have to get there soon, but he does just take enough for the full plate. And honestly, that's 34 defense, but this is, speaking of disappointing, he's going to find Erdrick's armor in the back of Garen as soon as he gets through Swamp Cave, so that will be a, a you know, a modest amount of time spent on that purchase. However, looks like Slamu has other ideas. He's going to go see if he can take care of this green dragon. Uh, which, as we pointed out, is is doable here as long as you can get a good run of sleep luck. Oh, the back attack will not help at all, though. Back attack doesn't help. Uh, with the, Oh, and, and a dodge. Oh, forget about it. What a terrible start to this fight for Slaymu. Uh, the green dragon on 45 defense is capable of hitting Slaymu for up to 33. Uh, and he's only doing, I think, 9 damage on average on 61 attack power, so would have to plow through most of his magic points to make this work, but it is doable. And it looks like he's just going to swing and heal more. Not a bad play, but a bit dangerous well, considering the well, back and the... Ooh. Uh, well. Uh, just crit is always the strategy. <laughs> it is a strat. This will get the level for Slamu as well. 4, 3, 14, 6. And hurt more. Pretty big deal. The search spot is the fairy flute. <laughs> Less of a big deal. Uh, you can put golems to sleep with the fairy flute, so there's no telling if that will come into play in the endgame grind. I think we we possibly believe that the swamp spike is a golem, so uh, yeah. that's there. And of course, you can hurt more of the green dragons, too, as we see just now. Yeah, this grind will definitely give him an experience lead for now. Though Angel will be r off and running with an exploration lead. Yeah, as well as that flame sword and silver shield. Uh, since Hurtmore shows up pretty soon, and in fact it looks like Angel is going to try to go for the next level on this knight, choosing prudently to go to the Hurt spell, instead doing slightly more damage with that than he is on 69 attack power. So Slamu doesn't quite get to level 9 on that cycle, and has a choice to make. He can, of course, go back for more green dragons if he wants them, but he's up to 80 hit points now on level 8. Big, uh, big stats, really, across the board. I mean, that's decent agility even for level 8. Um, they're more on par, I suppose, but good resources. 80 hit points, 57 magic points. Yeah. Strength not great yet, but I mean, this is good exploration stats. You'd love to just Ex walk around with this. Yeah, exactly, right? It's not so terrible that you feel compelled to grind, uh, but all, and you, you have both mortars already as well. Uh, but that said, I don't blame Slamu here at all for choosing to go back to the Green Dragon for another cycle. This level is 14 power, so there's some of the power. Two agility, seven hit points, one magic point. Stall Wyvern doing its job. It's it's out here to to just make you waste time on Angel's side. Looks like we, uh, this might be up toward the north edge of the map as well. And Angel double backs, so I think this maybe just loops around. It's opting not to go that direction. Or perhaps just wants his resources back. That could be it too. Yeah, knowing the Star Wyverns running out with sleep, and even if they also do have hurt, you never want to get sent back too easily. Yeah, and for, in fairness, we've seen, you know, us um, actually a decent chunk of the enemy set I, at this point, I guess. But uh, there's plenty of Charlock monsters running around over here on the west coast. Slamu needs only one more green dragon uh, to get to level 10. And Angel's going to have to throw a sleep here because the stone man will not let him go. Level 10 for Slamu, 4, 2, 3, 6, I think. Look like it. Not too good, but your stats are already obviously very good overall. But it looks like he's going to just, at the very least, run out of his resources here and maybe come back and maybe start exploring. We'll have to find out. That 
same time, Angel will take down this Star Wyvern to get to level 9. So at least in terms of what each of them have done and not done, I think it's still obviously a very close race. Anytime you have Hurt more, even if there's a gap such as we see in experience right now, Slamu has been making runs to the Spike Tile, so that's really not indicative of what's really going on in the seed in terms of who's ahead or behind. It just comes down to uh, who can proceed most efficiently. And here we see Angel heading across that bridge to the north. We'll come to Cantlin first. Needs to do no shopping, so skips them all and heads straight for this guy. This guy. <laughs> Just standing here behind a locked door, across barrier tiles, tells you to go fight sometimes if there's no overworld search spot, so that means there's no overworld search spot. So that means only one search spot potentially still in play, and we can't verify it until we see another cursed belt. Precisely. Uh, so the harp is hanging out somewhere. It could be in coal, could still be in one of the five chests of Mountain Cave, or it could be in the stones, Vanilla Stones of Sunlight Cave chest, commonly referred to as Freebie Cave, by those substantively more hip than I am. I mean, that doesn't take much, let's be honest. It's a very low bar. Let's just, we'll, we'll put that out there. It doesn't take much. Charlock is just to the west of Cantlin, so that will be very convenient in the endgame. And Slamu is going to pick up level 11, 7016. Agility, uh, I think, went from okay to very marginally concerning with that uh, second zero agility level. Honestly, at one point, I think it was even good. Like, Yeah, it no, it, it, it was. It was in the high yeah. 30s by, you know, what, six or seven? Yeah, that's presumably what Slamo is waiting for, and right now the seed does not want to give it to him. Yeah, uh, might be looking... I, I guess that's probably it, right? He has already ground some torches. He doesn't need Radiant in any event. Uh, so uh, speculating on, uh, you know, his kind of stop point here is probably not especially useful, but he is going to take a peek at his stat screen there just to get a check see if maybe upon this next death warp he might decide to strike out and explore a little bit more. Angel has gone way south because I yeah. thought he was at the north edge of the map but now it looks like unless this is a false map edge this looks like the south edge of the map. Definitely south edge. Oopsie. Definitely seems to be the south edge there. Yeah. Slamu is going back to the tile. Not too surprising, but I think... I don't know how many more levels you want to stay here, even if the utility doesn't come. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways this could kind of go badly. Angel's got only one dark cave left, so I believe this has to be Mount Cave, and it is. We'll do his bonk check and then head north. There's one chest on the top floor, four on the bottom floor, and as I pointed out earlier, this zone will be the same as we saw in Swamp Cave, so the werewolf not unexpected. Level 10 for Angel. Given that Slamu has been on a dedicated grind here, I don't even know that the experience gap is as big as I expected it would be. Yeah, the the MP isn't great for Hurt Mooring uh, Green Dragon, so Slamu has had to make a lot of trips back in repeatedly. Yeah, now the Green Dragons do have some Hurt More Resist. I really haven't been charting his progress in terms of whether he's getting more or fewer Hurt More Misses than expected, uh, but certainly... He does have a 1500 point ex experience advantage right now. 42612 on level 12 for Slamu, so the agility pushing up into uh, the high 40s there. Just a gain of two again. Angel on the bottom floor. He found a magic key in the top chest. It looks like just sundry items here, another fairy water, but he can drop the cursed belt for that.
chest just off the staircase is the silver harp. So I guess the only search spot that was occupied in the seed was Hawksness, which had the flute. There is still Urdric sword in play. Oh, that's true. I, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, I got the sword there. Yeah, I might want that one. Who knows? Said, I don't know that Angel will even bother with the flame sword. He's seen he's seen the golden spike tile, although he hasn't seen ooh. Yeah, he he still needs to go back. Well, I wouldn't say needs. He has some options now because he's full cleared uh, mountain cave, but he has not explored either grave, which is under Tanagel, and he has not checked the Hawksness spike yet. Uh, so all of like he knows now at this point, or at least should know, that the majority of his exploration is actually. Uh, outstanding on First Continent. That said, he has the Harp in hand, and Staff of Rain Cave is one of the few locations we have not seen to this point in the Seed. So it's very sensible for him to remain here on Second Continent, if possible, and try to track that down for the trade-in before he has to go back to First Continent. Plus, he never even saw uh, Hawksness on First Continent, so he doesn't even know there's a grind there. Yeah, I guess he probably didn't, did he? I'm trying to remember now. Yeah, I don't think he ever explored that direction. Yeah. I mean, he, he went to Rim, but beyond that, I don't know that he ever saw the yeah, town outside Yeah, he, he went to Rim, and as we saw at the very beginning of the seed, Slamu took the step out of Rim to go back in to the left, and so he spotted the town. Angel went north, and so he didn't actually see that tile on screen. That's interesting. It's wow. it's surprising to realize, but then you realize that Angel has only died four times, and one of those was an intentional death warp. <laughs> yes, it's yeah, it's true. I mean, there hasn't been that much in the seed that's threatening, and Angel's had the armor since, now you know, around the, what, 13, 14 minute mark, as I recall. So... Looks like Slime is finally joining in on the expiration. Yes, he is. He's just a little bit shy of level 13, uh, which will show up at 41.25, if my recollection is accurate. It is. That's surprising, but nevertheless interesting. We will get a look at the Swamp Spike. It is actually another green dragon. So that golem we saw before was just in the zone, and we saw that in Mountain Cave anyway, so that just confirms it. Two green dragon spikes, and Slamu, as I pointed out, just a little distance away from level 13, so decides, yeah, fine. Takes it out with a hurt more, and we'll get to level 13. 2 power, 3 speed, 1 hit point, 9 magic points, and return. So just about fully loaded. Stop spell is still hanging out there somewhere on these uh, last three levels. And Slamu's gonna rescue the princess. I don't blame him here. I mean, it makes total sense, right? He's seen all the first continent. Uh, this will unfortunately not prove useful as there are no coordinates. If he outsided, he might Although, be different of it, but... Yeah, maybe he just chooses to carry here instead of returning right away. I suppose the fact that he didn't cast outside immediately may indicate that he's just planning on the carry here and not the immediate rescue. Yeah. But small first continent, I mean, this makes total sense as a player, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, you're you're expecting if there are coordinates. Number one, you know, uh, Cantlin is on second continent. And number two, you figure coordinates probably are too, so why not just turn in the princess, grab the coordinates, or find the coordinates, and then know exactly where to go. Obviously, yeah, exactly. won't pay off for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes you, you make the play that's the odds-on play, and it just doesn't work out that way. That's kind of the nature of most randomizers. So here we are. Slamu at 4,500 experience points, Angel at 2,300. And Angel, I think, still on the hunt for... Staff of Rain Cave, he did manage to top off his resources at Cantlin, so based on the amount of map that he's seen at this point, I would expect that he does not have much exploration left and should find, uh, barring some commentator's cursed disaster, the Staff of Rain Cave before he has to leave Second Continent. There presumably can't be too many places, yeah. Uh, but this map has just been going on and on. Yeah. I actually expected Angel to find something across that bridge because it's one of the few places we haven't seen, but there's also this bridge to the south through this swamp. 
and Angel coming across, I think this is our first encounter with an Axe Knight. Didn't see anything immediately threatening there, but that doesn't mean it's not still hiding some dangerous ability. It looks like Slamo has decided to just finish off his grind, then outside and return. Yeah, which again, you know, makes sense here. Uh, he's just taking the opportunity. Less walking is always good. Looks like Angel will find both a town, which is Breconary, meritorious of an immediate departure, and the Stones of Sunlight Cave, which could easily be Sword. But it's not, it's a magic key. I think means Sword is definitely in Sherlock. Or maybe it could be in Cole. Could be in Cole. Uh, could be in Cole. Uh, which we have yet to see. There's a little, I think there's some exploration left to the east and perhaps the south here from where Angel is right now. Slamu has returned Princess Gwalen and will be purchasing some keys at the back door here. Top them off before he has to go do some more exploration. So on the one hand, Angel's exploration really hasn't helped him out much at all. On the other hand, it's not like Slamu, considering how long and just linear Second Continent looks, it doesn't seem like Slamu can really explore better in terms of catching up to him. Yeah, because Mountain Cave had the rest of the stuff, right? So, um, or pardon me, Grave had most of the stuff, Mountain Cave had the harp. Uh, so really, you just have to dip that. It's interesting because Angel will have uh, potentially, let's say the sword is in coal. Uh, then Angel has no cause to deep dive grave, which saves him time over what Slamu did. At the same time, Slamu may not have the same opportunity. He's still going to be looking for sword uh, when he reaches Mountain Cave in all likelihood, because we see coal here on Angel's screen. I believe that's the only town that could possibly be now, right? Yeah, if Sword is there, that's actually good for Slamu, because that means he'll find it either way. Uh, potentially. Presumably, because potentially. We, still seen, we still haven't seen Staff trade in. That's true, yeah, we we have not seen it yet, so it's probably over here somewhere, and there is Erdrick Sword on the coal search spot. So Angel is fully kitted out here at the 35 minute mark, just, uh, let's see, 41 experience point shy of level 12. Slamu sees the shop and probably ruse the decision not to go through with more gold at some other point, but... Yeah, there's nothing much you can do about that. Yeah. Where is Staff Trade in Cave at this point? I... I don't know. Uh, Angel's kept... I mean, there haven't been really any spots on the second continent to, to my uh, perception of the map. There would seem to be spots where if you were hanging to the coast, you might miss something in the middle. I mean, it's been pretty tight. Um, so I haven't seen anything like that. I would suspect that maybe it's a little bit further to the south here, uh, but it's gonna be windy. Yeah, just a lot of little offshoots that don't last long, but make the whole routing a bit odd. Yeah. Slamu fishes the death necklace out of Tablet Cave and is going to check to the north first. I'm not sure if I saw the stop spell from the blue dragon earlier, but it is stop spell hurt more. Uh, so the stop spell, of course, has no effect. Once you have Urgric's armor, you're immune to damage tiles of any kind, as well as stop spell, and it also cuts the damage from breath and hurt spells, hurt and hurt more both, both weak breath and dragon or two breath by one third. So plenty of benefits there, in addition to the heal walking every step, which is nice. Slamu manages to exacto 5,000 experience, but sadly that's not a level. Sadly, no. Uh, no extra credit for that. Uh, just merely having an even four-digit number uh, that's that's got three zeros in it does not entitle you to any bonus bucks. Uh, so that's disappointing, but nevertheless, a uh, good effort. 5,000 experience. Seems like Angel has given up exploring for Staff Cave, but given that he's trying to grind here, I assume he knows where he needs to go for it, roughly. Hmm. 
That's a good question. Is he just pacing back and forth, or was he? Yeah. He was going in. He was pacing back and forth in the desert, and then he walked into the into the swamp and paced back and forth there. Hmm. Okay. Angel, to my knowledge, has not seen either spike tile yet. When he took his death warp out of Swamp Cave, uh, he did not see the spike there because that was a green dragon, and I don't believe that he saw the green dragon in Swamp Cave. But he has seen this peninsula before, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think he's definitely trying to find a grind. It would like maybe the... Uh, he saw a magician just before he left in the desert swamp area, so maybe that just decided... decided the zone for him in terms of not wanting to go back there. Uh... Not That's potentially. Seemingly what yeah. he's doing is trying to find an overworld grind. Yeah, with two spikes out there, I'm not I'm not sure that that would be a good idea, but I'm also not entirely sure that's what he's doing. I think maybe he's just exploring here and happens to be getting you know, a lot of moderately decent fights. Although, no, okay, he goes north there. I guess he has decided to settle in here. Yeah, that's cold on the other side of the screen on his so in, his, in his screen, and I'm pretty sure he full cleared past goal, so... Yeah, he did. He did for sure. Yeah, he did ended that. Um, maybe he's, is... He's also not healing, so maybe he's also trying to get okay. a death here. Could be a fighting death warp. Um, very reasonable under these circumstances. We saw oh. him do this in Swamp Cave earlier too, if you recall. Um, I'm I'm wondering because remember he didn't actually explore past rim. He might think Staff Cave is down there. <sighs> That's a good point. If he missed it, he could be making a mistake here and thinking that it's down there. Yeah, uh, if if he feels he's full cleared Second Continent, he might head to the southwest here. First of all, see Hawksness, and that's just court, kind of a smack your forehead moment, uh, because he was looking for Hawksness too, in addition to Staff Cave. Didn't find either, and so headed back to First Continent. Uh, we'll be very disappointed to find the Fairy Flute, probably about as disappointed as Slamu will have been just now to have rescued the princess, only to discover there are no coordinates. At least now we can put it on his resume. Uh, princess Rescuer. That looks pretty good, I would think, right? In this economy? Sure. <laughs> what are your special skills? Well, I rescued a princess. Okay, sir, we're desperate, but we're not that desperate. Please leave. Oh, Slamu, narrowly missing, exact doing level 14. So, oh, 729, 834. Oh my goodness, he's, that's, that's just catapulted himself into nearly go already. I mean, honestly, is that go a uh, sword? Uh, not quite, but Not quite, yeah, 123, close. I guess 125 if you find the fighter's ring, which I think is just laying around in, in maybe Mountain Cave. Um... Probably not quite, but it's... I mean, yeah, we could... Goes. With Fairy Water, you probably could. It wouldn't be especially comfy, but... I mean, it's not comfortable, right? But you could see either player making a play on that in this situation. And it oh, just definitely. kind of and it kind of happens really suddenly, too. The problem is Slamu's still got so much in terms of uh, homework to do. I guess not so much. He's got to find Mountain Cave, and that's really his last trade. But then we still don't know where Staff of Rain Cave is, so... Yeah, it's gonna. It feels like it could come down to Staff of Rain Cave. It really does. Uh, Angel's gonna sit here on this spike tile when he gets 14. I mean, I don't even know what he'll do. He's got all the Erdrick gear. He's got Silver Shield. Uh, he still needs stones and tokens, so he's got to dive Grave post haste. I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't do that immediately uh, out of his Death Warp, uh, since that's in the base yeah. of Angel. I mean, to be fair, you never think you're gonna get. 30 agility and 30, basically 30 <laughs> MP and basically 10 HP yeah. and et cetera and so forth, all in the same level, but... Yeah, for sure. Uh, but Slamu is in Mountain Cave. That harp is sitting there on the second floor. This really think... could come down to, like, who manages to over-level the least in this seed in the end. 
Yeah, it's kind of weird. I, I think the interesting thing, too, is you see Slaymu there still has a small shield. He could always upgrade that to a large, but it seems unlikely that he'll gold grind again, which, given that the agility makes a big jump here on level 14, means Angel's going to be in repel range for a lot more stuff than Slaymu will be. Yeah, that could also, especially with Star Wyverns being so annoying, that could be a big difference maker. Yeah, because they're not dangerous, but they are time-consuming. So if you still have those around, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, Slamu gets his... Uh, dragons, or checks his dragon skill. I think maybe. Um, did he have one already? I guess it doesn't matter. Angel's got level 14 now, too. He did, because there was one at the bottom of Grave. Ah, okay. So Angel gets the big level. And immediately checks the staff screen and goes, oh, Okay. And he's going to fight another green dragon, although I assume that his, since he is almost on... Well, he's basically running out of fumes. He's going <laughs> to try to die here, but he two swings the green anyway. Because why not? When death warps go wrong. <laughs> well, the problem now is the green is broken. Uh, so Angel has immediate... Oh no! <laughs> he's got 88 defense. Um... I don't actually know that he wants any experience here, but he's just hoping for some higher rolls from this green, and he's not getting it. I think he still has the fighter's ring, though, so he could just equip that to die, but he's... I don't know, maybe he is just taking the extra experience here. It is it is a little bit of an uncomfortable level, right? I mean, it's not... Yes, but not having not having seen and traded in drop uh, for, uh, for uh, staff, and not having gotten the last two items, which to be fair, I think he knows at this point you have to be engraved, but like, considering all those, I, I don't know that you just, even if it's uncomfortable, I think you just get it as you go if you want another level. That's what Slamu appears to be doing, because he's still fighting some things, too. Yeah, uh, using Repel to ward off some of the lesser enemies. Uh, but still exploring here. Angel finally gets his death. I think that was... That was, what, like six green dragons he killed between the time he just started swinging melee in? Alright, Angel headed to the back door. Uh, so once he gets top three, he can opt out of diving any further because he has... everything. You know, basically, yeah. he doesn't have a dragon scale yet, which actually, in this situation, I don't think helps that much. It shaves a little bit of uh, defense off, but it's not going to repel anything extra. If he does want it, like, it's going to be on, uh, Garenham is on the way to Sherlock, so. Right. Yep. It's Slamu. really just going to come down to who finds that cave first. Yeah. Angel is going west again. He hasn't seen the dead end of this peninsula yet, and just like that, he does. So now maybe the gears are turning a little bit in terms of what haven't I seen on Second Con, and they look like he explored it very thoroughly. Uh, Slamu also has yet to encounter that cave, and we've seen this region before. Uh, Angel went across here, across this bridge. I think this might be the way toward Breconary and Stones of Sunlight Cave, and possibly Coal as well. Yeah, Cole is over there, too. So that'll yeah. be good for Slamu, because he definitely needs the sword. Yes, 100%. Angel is continuing to fight, which is sensible. Uh, he only needs 1,200, actually less than 1,200 experience to next level, and now with that golem is well under 1,000. Gets a back-to-back -back golem going through Swamp Cave. And Slamu does upgrade to the large shield, so he's at least at 80. It's not especially meaningful for a Charlock dive because it means he's repelling wizards. Those are broken now. Uh, but... Uh, so the scale is actually a little bit nicer for Slamu than it would be for Angel. But we have yet to see what level 15 might bring too. Although, as chat did note, if Angel does get the uh, scale, he will be breaking Dragon Lord 1 fight. 
that is helpful. Uh, you never know if you end up there on low resources. That's kind of the intermediate one, not a quote-unquote Charlock enemy. Uh, but yeah, having DL1 broken can, can be very useful. Depends on, if, depends on if DL1 actually decides to melee, though, which is always the tricky part. Yeah. I think Angel got four golems walking through Swamp Cave. He opted out of that last one. Okay, just... did we did we see that cave? Uh, that's in a desert. I thought... I don't think... No, that's Staff. Oh, oh, Angel missed Staff. Yeah, it was over this direction. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but he did miss the route to it. Maybe he knows that's the last place he has to look, but if not, he's going to have to start retracing his steps. And in the meantime, Slamu has all three components he needs to form the Rainbow Drop. And Rainbow Drop Cave is just outside of Swamp Cave, so he knows where that is already. He just needs to think about. Now, Slamu's in a spot where the only only thing left he ha needs to see is coal, right? So yeah. um, the actual odds play, based on the fact that we've only seen one Cursed Belt, to my knowledge, would be that the sword is, is potentially in Charlock. Uh, but is that a risk he's willing to take if he doesn't see coal soon? Yeah, this could this could be very, very tricky for both our racers. Yeah. A little bit of an unexpected dilemma for both of them. Angel is retracing his steps to the north. Uh, and unfortunately, this is not the correct direction to try to find Staff Cave. Or maybe it is. I guess you have to go this way anyway, right? Yeah. I think you can also maybe go the other direction. I'm not exactly sure this starting area. It's kind of weird. Oh, no. I th think you can only go this direction. Yeah. That bridge, I guess, is the only way to the sort of main body of the continent. Uh, south of Garenham, dead ends, perhaps. And Angel is headed this way. Uh, let's see where he goes. I wish I could remember exactly where Cole was. I thought it was near Breconary. Oh, it might be here. I think, yep, that's Cole. Oh, this is going to come down to the wire. Yeah. So Slamu in range of the sword. Uh, we'll also be fully geared up. Knows where the Rainbow Drop Cave is. And we also have, as uh, we kind of hinted at it earlier in the seed, but with Cantlin right outside Charlock, that means you have very easy access to fairy water before you dive too. So Slamu taking a long look at his stat screen here, crunching some numbers. That fairy water is helpful for sure on 125, which is an average damage. Uh, the range is technically six and a quarter to 12 and a half. Uh, so you would expect basically exactly nine average damage on 125. Uh, and Fairy Water is going to do, uh, you know, 12, 12 and a half. So its uh, damage range is 9 to 16. Uh, so that's oh. definitely an improvement. I think Slamo is looking for an overall grind over here. Uh, no, he was just, uh, what was he looking for? He did dead end that. Yeah. I'm but he's actually, not actually not looking sure for anything he's... else, is Yeah. He? I don't know what he's doing right now. He should only need Jerk. And Jerk was right outside of Garenham, I think. Yeah, he right? he definitely went into Jerk. I remember seeing because I hadn't actually realized where Jerk was until Slamu saw it. So mm. I don't know what he's doing right now. He might just be canvassing zones for a grind. Which, when you know there's a green dragon spike tile like right at home, I don't know why you do that. Yeah, probably unwise to speculate. I mean, this is game three of a of a make or break series this is a chance to get into the finals um, sometimes you start looking for things and then realize oh wait a second i don't actually have anything to look for yes and, and slamu is heading dead west here now so maybe he it has occurred to him that he just needs to bail out of this part of the continent and get back to to swamp cave yeah i think that's what's going on now angel on the other hand still cannot find staff cave and he is not searching in the right direction at this point. Yeah, uh, he did pick up level 15, and uh, just one additional agility there, so it does not change the defense equation. One additional strength, uh, that was seven hit points and six magic points, so it doesn't really change the calculus a, a whole lot, I suppose. Although, I guess he's got an additional heal more now at 131. Yeah, the heal more will definitely be welcome for this sort of attempt. Yeah, and one attack power when you're still in the mid one hundred uh, mid one twenties is actually really valuable in terms of your Dragonlord two math. 
It's not quite worth a full swing here, but it's pretty close. I'm trying to remember, is it is it possible Slamu hasn't seen Charok? It was it, Well, we it, know he was in Cantlin. Yeah, it should be like right off screen, but okay, here he's going by a jerk at least. Yeah, I think if you um, I think if you were in Cantlin, you kind of had to see Charlock, but I could be mistaken. Slamu will be the first to trade in the Staff of Rain, the Stones of Sunlight, and the Erdrix token to get the Rainbow Drop. Uh, one Angel. other... Uh, sorry, I'll just drop this in real quick. One other slight consideration is that because Slamu rescued the princess, he's got one fewer inventory slot available for fairy water. Uh, Gwaylin's love is hanging around. I think Angel is now on the rough track towards that little desert area. Because I think, yeah, that's... He's, he's getting close to staff. Yeah. Yeah, I believe this is the right way. To... Go ahead. And Slamu is into Cantlin now, probably going get, to be getting ready to dive. Yeah, he's going to check his inventory real quick. He's just going to sell the Death Necklace, which if he's planning on going right now, makes perfect sense. You don't need that at all. Not near Death Necklace range. Can ditch that Fighter's Ring too once you equip that and the scale. Those bonuses are permanent. So just has Gwaylin's Love and the Fairy Flute. Uh, no offense to Gwaylin. Uh, clogging his inventory. Let's just be fair about it. It's gonna be real. It's just sitting there. Sadly, you can't sell it. Love is not for sale. Contrary to the old song. Very old song. Ancient, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not quite ancient pretty old so the difference is that if if slamu dives and tries to grind on the way down he's going to be very that's going to be a big time sink in his case because all he's going to get for his money is more mp which won't help him once you're in sherlock angel did track down staff cave he was on the right track did get there just opts to return to tanagel and go through swamp cave to get himself much closer to jerk which is probably a great play in that situation a little bit of a shortcut rather than having to walk all the way back and so he's on his on the route to charlock as well zone one looks like i think i saw a stone man there and a green dragon for slamu so far uh there was also an axe knight i think okay uh, one thing that we should point out, not to wish them into existence, but the two worst run blockers in the game, the Red Dragon and the Armored Knight, we have not seen nor heard from all seed. Uh, so if there are any here, we'll be going into that blind. We don't know if they have any dangerous abilities or anything of the sort. And speaking of blind, Slimu dive in Charlock in the dark, preserving all of those valuable, valuable fairy water spaces. Angel also divesting himself of the torch and probably anything else in his inventory that is not nailed down as he prepares to make his dive and Slamu is now into the basement. I believe this is zone two now, actually. Yeah, he's on the diamond-shaped floor. Telltale walking pattern gets to the stairs, has two more basements of zone two in which we've seen just a blue dragon so far. And Angel, as is appropriate, and as Slamu did, checking in with the radish vendor. It is required. I believe the seed is now validated? Yeah. A Slamu Angel tradition unlike any other. Buying radishes. Or maybe just... I don't know, you don't actually buy radishes. You just gotta check in, make sure the radish seller is alright, make sure his family life's going good, you know. Yeah. Alright, 
so far like, this it's yeah. a really clean dive right Which yeah like say? so far it seems like a breeze of a sherlock but good job man <laughs> way to be you spawned a dl2 red dragon oh, good grief no oh excuse me i've got to go tender my resignation <laughs> Oh, what have I done? Yeah, I'll, I'll need the letter on my desk by morning. Oh, man. Oh, miserable, and he decides to run there, and I don't... I can't blame him. I mean, he needs those resources. Yeah. And you're playing and you're playing for everything, right? And Slamu and Angel have played this series just backs to the wall the entire way. They're going all out, leaving everything on the proverbial field in Alephgard. And so I don't blame him at all for making that run attempt there. Charlock, yeah. unfortunately, back through Swamp Cave. So Slamu's got to make that trek again. And Angel now is into Zone 1 as well. So Zones 1 and 2 looked pretty clean. Slamu didn't even get that many encounters in Zone 2. For all we know, there could be uh, dangerous things lurking there still. So this is far from over. And of course, we've seen that Red Dragon in Zone 3 at minimum. And of course, that could is, is one of six potential monsters that could be on the Charlock spike tile. So hang on tight, uh, because uh, you never know what could happen there. Um, this is oh oh no. Is Slamu Did you going? See that? Yeah, Slamu went back. He's halfway to level fifteen, so he's gonna take this. I'm actually gonna fade the red dragon information at the moment. I don't want to look at it. Oh, I I don't think anyone really wants to look at it. <laughs> Well, I mean, based on our sample size, right, that was easily, you could easily ballpark that at 50% uh, breath, whether it has any other abilities. That's the watching, part that gets worse. That's the part that might get worse. So Angel, I think, did just see an armored knight here in zone two. Slamu didn't see any of those on his way down, but did Angel did get away uh, pretty directly. He's slightly p better positioned to take some melee damage. He does have 10 more defense with that silver shield than Slamu did. But on the other hand, the the DL2 breath cares not for your silver shield. And the extra level won't really help him because just one agility isn't going to really move the needle. Yeah, a little bit more hit points, which is nice, but here Angel gets run blocked and the DL2 breath and just decides, you know what, I gotta go too. And he runs and gets blocked and DL2 breathed down as well. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the earlier decided was who finds Staff Cave first. Yeah. That's out of the window. Yeah, forget that one. That happened, as far as we're concerned, about 10 years ago now, because the world has changed. Everything was going good until DL2 Red Dragon Nation attacked. <laughs> yeah, it was just nice and peaceful. Now what are we going to do? Get run blocked by a golem and 81 agility, apparently. Slamu has level 15, just as Angel enters Swamp Cave. Did you really expect anything different? Not really. Neck and neck per usual, and Slamu has taken a left off the spec tile, so he's on his way out of Swamp Cave. And once more in this series, our runners will be in a virtual dead heat down the stretch here, although the golems in Swamp Cave are doing their level best to waylay Slamu here. Yeah, that's getting a bit ridiculous on Slamu's side. <laughs> Especially because he would have probably loved to see them before he got to the spike tile. Yeah, honestly, I mean, that that's a better fight right here on, on 126. You'd much prefer to fight a golem and just spend the heal more, get the 350 instead of fighting greens, but what are you going to do? Angel tops off. Both racers on level 15. Uh, they have, I believe, 16 heal mores, which is a pretty high number, but they do only have 126 attack power. So they're going to be relying on fairy waters and some decent rolls to get them through the DL2 fight. And they both know that the resources are still relatively thin right here, so we might just see them barge, try to barge through zone 3 again at the bottom of Charlock here. I mean, at 15, the resources get good enough where they're a bit better than thin. The problem is just, like, every level is thin when there is a rough yeah. red dragon or armor knight fight in here. Right. And that's that's the big problem. 
and it Angel's now got a lead of about a floor or so into Charlock. Depending on encounter luck, that could fade pretty quickly. Angel gets briefly held up by a blue dragon. We'll continue his walk through basement one. And as Chad has pointed out, uh, a most amazing occurrence has happened. Both players have the exact same experience at level 15. <laughs> Good grief. I didn't even notice that. 75-45. Well, if you were wishing for a close race, uh, chances were pretty good that you were going to get one anyway, based on the previous two in this best of three series. But, yeah, that's uh, a microcosm of this entire series and how close it's been. Arbor Knights have also been spotted now. Yeah, I think we saw one of those before on Angel's side here in Zone 2. It was the first time we'd seen it. Slamu didn't meet any of those on his first dive. Angel now in the last floor of Zone 2. After this, there be dragons. Armor Knights have hurt more. That's fine. Uh, that's going to slightly outpace... Uh, well, I don't know. It's roughly on par with their melee damage, even on 90 defense. Yes. Uh, so, not amazing. Uh, but Angel, after a couple run fails, manages to get through and Slamu spots his first Armor Knight of the Seed. Angel's going to burn. He's got some spare MP there on top of his heal more, so he's going to use the Repel, try to get through any other monsters, get rid of any anything else that's down here, and perhaps just limit, him limit himself to... Uh, maybe that Red Dragon's the only unrepelled thing in the zone. Who knows? And someone finally makes it to bottom floor. Yeah, here we go. Zone 3 run. The spike tile still could prove quite dangerous. Uh, but there are golems here in zone three, and Angel gets ambushed. Absurd. Agility, not even once. Although at least the repelling is going well. The repelling is going well. Might just be golems and red dragons in zone three. The spike tile is a stone man, which we, we've seen a good bit of. Angel got run blocked quite a bit by one of these pretty early into his foray on second continent. Didn't see any abilities from it then, didn't see any from it now. So Angel, through the spike, with all of his heal mores and a chance to win the match and advance to the finals, gets oh, an... Oh, oh, man. Oh, that's the best encounter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your heart catches in your throat when you see that encounter pop up, and then when it's the golem, you just uh, melt a little bit. Here we go. Dragonlord 1 is broken for Angel on 90 defense oh. catches a hurt more first turn oh there's sleep star wyverns here so angel ducked those and for slamu of course they're not broken so they're actually a little bit more dangerous See, they're gonna sap some resources here and even worse slap uh, snap uh yeah sap time because and that's the one thing he couldn't afford to lose right now yeah 100 percent angel's not even gonna bother to try to heal here goes into dl2 with 67 hit points does not get back attacked and immediately dips into the fairy water reserves for an opening 14. Fifteen for the second fairy water roll. Well above average so far. Twenty-nine for Angel after two turns. Slamu skates to the DL1 fight. Here we go again. Dueling Dragonlord fights in the series. And a fairy water for the max. Sixteen for Angel. Looking real good so far. Fourteen. Not that he needed out of this world fairy water rolls, but he's gonna get a double here too and roll another 16. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Angel tracking to have a ton of resources left at the end of this one. Already having done 75 damage and has one more fairy water left. That one's mere nine. Nevertheless, 84. And he's still got 11 heal mores left. Now reverting to melees. Six to 12, the range on 126. Meanwhile, Slamu having a just a way too long of a DL1 fight for his liking, probably. 
Yeah, in all likelihood, he is down uh, two heal mores here, it looks like. Or I guess, well, no, just one. He's down one heal more. We'll open up with melees. You see our tracker here. I think that I think that's correct that it is 24 uh, slamu right now. Uh, but Angel, well ahead here, has done 125 damage so far. That's another mineral of six. We've seen a couple of those so far, but nothing that's going to significantly damage his chances here. He could mineral the rest of the way and still uh, be in very good shape. There's a 12. 143. Next swing could easily do it, depending on deal 2 HP. That's an 11. 154. And no need for a risky swing there. Gonna heal more on 48. That's a 12, and that's game. Ooh, GG. Everybody, please get your GGs out and chat for Angel FM. What a race again. Both runners in the DL2 fight at the same time. But Angel's gonna take this one, and he's gonna take the series in advance to the finals for the first time. Angel FM has a shot at the title against Tilo Tilo in the finals, finishing this one up with an official race time.gg time of 1 hour 9 minutes 47 seconds. Whew. Man, after this series, I think I'll need a long nap. <laughs> Honestly, this series was about as good as you can possibly expect a series to go in terms of just fantastic finishes and fantastic races so yeah i don't really know what else you could you could possibly want uh it's it was um you know really well done by both racers both of them had you know a little bit of a a tougher time of it tonight and that was certainly the, those red dragons in the final zone both got each of our racers one time uh, and then you know, Angel having trouble tracking down the staff cave really kind of brought that a little bit tighter at the end, but at the same time, uh, both of them still playing uh, about as good a series as you could ask for. I mean, I think if, if Red Dragons with Diablo 2 Breath hadn't been just giving the racers the business, I think both racers probably would have finished under an hour, it felt like. Yeah. Yeah, and for a seed that started the way this one did. Whenever you have kind of a small first con in it, sometimes goes that way where it'll slow things down a little bit, but not so in this case. We are joined in the booth right now by our... Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, First, yeah. I want to know, do you know about the Final Fantasy XIV trial? <laughs> Gosh, dang it. GG, Angel. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Slamu is making the walk right now, as is his tradition on the left side. So please, if you have not done so already, also get your GGs out for Purple Mario. He has not won the series, but he has rescued the princess, and he has finished with an official race time.gg time of 1 hour 11 minutes and 51 seconds. Max HP Dragonlord 2. Not that it mattered so much for your fight, Angel. That was, uh, those were some heroic fairy water rolls. I mean, I, I think I wasted all my luck on that one. <laughs> 16, 15, 14s, and then the final nine. But... The nine, yeah, you burnt it out by the nine, but whenever you do, like, over, what, a high 80s damage on that many fairy water, that's pretty impressive. Slamu has joined us now in the booth as well. GG to you. Thanks, that red dragon is going to sit in my mind for the next 10 months. If it's any consolation, well, go ahead, Angel. You can tell him. Yeah, I had the same thing happen to me. I, I figured. I'm like, there, there's no way. I mean, I was, I was, I'm assuming we were neck and neck at that point. I'm, I'm looking at probably like a 101 finish or maybe a minute even finish. Same as you, I'm guessing. Probably more than likely. Like, I died to the red dragon in your room. Same, exact same room. It was um, virtually the same tile, honestly. It was, you both got first encounter reds and they both run blocked a couple times and you both had, you know, we're in a position where you kind of had to run or the dive was dead anyway, so. 
yeah, that was, I mean, yeah, it was, it was what it was. And then I, I went and got 15, um, because I, I don't know, I figured I should have just gone again, but with my rolls, I don't think I would have gotten there. Yeah, it seemed like your DL2 fight went substantively worse than Angel's did. Um, just not really the same average damage at all, but so who knows if you would have gotten there in 14. Yeah, I had 18 attacks on 126 AP to cover uh, 169 with five fairy waters in there. Yeah, and you <laughs> needed is, every... This is not... Yeah, you needed every bit of that too. We did see the DL2 stats. I don't know if you caught that when you came in, but it was 165 for the DL2 HP, so... Yeah, that was a squeeze. That, I mean, I felt like I felt like that went well. I mean, I felt like the seed played well. Um, literally, didn't see an AK or a dragon until Sherlock, and the first one I see is just—I mean, the round ender. Maybe I go again on fourteen. I got a better chance, but I can't fault what I did. And Angel's quite the competitor, and I knew I had to go fast, and just wasn't quite fast enough tonight. Yeah, Angel had the silver shield, so it would have been neck and neck either way. Had you gone on fourteen, probably. Yeah, there was no way I was wasting time to grind that thing. It's just too fast. Yeah, I mean, I had already found Garen Ham with all the stuff, so I just went oh. and did this little shield after dying out of Swamp Cave. Gotcha. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think I mean I headed back once to die, and that was it. It's really interesting. Your roots were, I mean, un in comparison to the first two races, certainly. Your roots were very divergent. I'm, Angel, I'm going to start with you because I'm interested. Did you see Hawksness at all before you went back to First Con? I don't remember seeing it. Like, I don't remember when I entered Rimaldar, and then when I looked at where Hawksness was compared to Rimaldar, I'm like, okay, well, I didn't see this apparently. Yeah, it's it's really weird just the, the way really tiny things can affect seeds. But you could see Hawksness just off screen and you both did the same thing. You bought keys, you walked out of Rim, but Angel, you walked a tile north, so you didn't see Hawksness right away. Slamu, did you see Hawksness when you walked out? Because you walked to the west a tile. Yeah, I saw it immediately and I, I, I beelined for it and I saw Hawksness and I, I mean, I kind of left it until level seven or eight, seven, I think, six, six or seven, somewhere in there. I didn't have hurt more yet, so. Right. Yeah, I think you got hurt more maybe after you killed that first green. Yeah, I killed I killed the green. I could have killed the green without the crit, but I wasn't going to complain about the crit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. But that was just one of the... That was like a really interesting thing that just happened right at the beginning of the seed. And then Angel, it seemed like you were basically full clearing second con and looking for, uh, you know, Hawksness probably, and then also Staff Cave. So how did things go? I mean, what were you thinking during that stretch there where you're still exploring? Uh, really worrisome because I found everything else pretty quick. I just didn't see this little divergence to uh, Staff Cave. And then I see Hawksness nearby, and I'm like, I hope it was a bad enemy, but unfortunately it had to be a green dragon. So, I mean, it could have been sitting there doing hurt more forever. Which is and, basically what Slamu did. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I didn't leave until 12 or 13. I think it was 12 and a half, basically. Um... And yeah, at that point, the rest of the overworld is free. I got I got 14 and a half, probably, just walking the rest of the overworld. I mean, I, I didn't die to anything else in the overworld after I got Silver Shield and uh, Flame Sword. And that was the one thing, too, is when I did the gold grind, I'm like, I said, basically, you know, I hope level eight does not have hurt more because I was like 65 experience away from it at that point. And, you know, so I did the whole grind for, you know, hurt more to show up that next level. Was there a, I forget, was there a some weapon in Garenham? I had broadsword from Rim, so I was never going anywhere. Yeah, there was a flame sword. They had flame sword, magic armor, silver shield, but we had air yeah, armor I, at that point. Yeah, I saw the magic armor, silver shield, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I got, I got a, I got a, I got a broadsword. I'm not going to need this silver shield. <laughs> and of course, I think there's only one large shield in the entire seed. And it was Breconary. I doped out of that as soon as I saw it, because I had everything I needed. No, definitely, definitely a good set of good set of races here. I mean, this is this has got to be um, the yeah the most 
pressing set of races that I've played in a long time, so looking forward to watching you uh, lose to Tilo in the finals, but well, well, let's let's be let's be honest. Okay, I I dumpstered Stags, I dumpstered you. I'm gonna dumpster Tilo. I'm gonna dumpster the, the entire Magic Drakey group here. The the cumulative like four minute over three three seeds victories of dumpstering now. <laughs> Pretty much, but no, I, th I think the funny thing is is that you know, like within a uh, like a year's time, like this is like the third final me and Tilo are playing in. Yeah, that's what happens when you when you let, let, let the best play best of threes, right? Why couldn't we have had a best of one series? Well, for what it's worth, you do get a best of one series in the third place race against DK. That that's good because I really wasn't interested in three races against DK for a uh, for a bronze medal. So I'll beat him. I'll beat him in one for a bronze. Fair enough. So, Angel, you are moving on to the finals. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling good. Uh, got the you know high spirit stink off of me of winning winter and then getting some place in summer. So I feel pretty good. Wow. So many shots fired tonight. Uh, but, I mean, congratulations to both of you. Uh, you played a heck of a series, one of the best I've seen since I've been watching. And, you know, I can't really compliment uh, both of your play, uh, the way you play the game enough. Uh, it's uh, just terrific to watch and really good for the community to have a terrific series like this in the semis. Oh, I mean, there's not even a question to that. Like, Slay Moo is a great competitor. Like, everyone in, everyone in the bracket has been a great competitor through this. I mean, the whole tournament's been great. And hopefully I'm going to hope this finals is going to be just as well. Mand, you got anything? Uh, just fantastic. Uh, the first race will, like, the first race still feels like a race that if if Dragon War Randomizer community had like an ESPN thing, <laughs> that would that would be the one of the races you'd see every year during the off season. And this race wasn't that far behind, so fantastic. All right. Any closing thoughts? Anybody? Pardon me. Hang on. Uh, Not, I mean, just any just closing a, thoughts. Anybody? A huge, huge thank you to everybody that helps put this thing on. All the admins, um, everybody that volunteered any little bit of this thing. Right. I mean, this was the largest from a games played undertaking tournament that we've ever had, and uh, couldn't have done it without the admin group, without the volunteers. So thank you to those guys specifically tonight. Thank you to Archfield Man and. Um, can't be on a math girl. Thank you guys for giving up your time. Um, it's, I mean, cumulative. We've got a ton of volunteer hours in this thing just to let people watch, you know, two, two guys in their thirties play a video game made in the eighties. So thank you for that. It, it makes it fun. I mean, I couldn't have said that any better than Slamu did. So thank you all. Man, I was just happy to be here for it. Great time. Looking forward to the finals and to the third place race. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you to our restreamer tonight, MathGirl718. Thank you very much to our tracker, Kami on Renekai, who counted so that you don't have to, and tracked so that you don't have to, and just kind of does a lot of things so that I don't have to, which is good, because it's good for me not to have to do things, as Mand will attest. Definitely. Don't want me doing things, really, is what it comes down to. That said... Thank you all for joining us tonight. I hope you had a great time. I know we did. We're going to send a raid. Looks like we're going to go see Fred. Thank you, Math Girl. From all of us in the Dragon Warrior Randomizer community, hope you enjoyed this race. Hope you'll stick around. Please stay tuned to the, to the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Discord for all of the pertinent information regarding scheduling for the finals and for the third place race. Uh, but for everybody here tonight, I'm Archfield Monk. Thank you, Mant. I had a great time. It was passable. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you had, to, you had to be here with me, so 
you know, it can only be, there's like a ceiling, right? It can only be so good. It's like, pops out at a certain point. You're, you're a low ceiling, high floor prospect. <laughs> that I am. And with that, <laughs> that's manned. I'm Archfield. So long, everybody. Have a great evening.